Okay, so let's start creating our character. So for this one, I wanted a, a kind of spooky time worn puppet, but also the type that looked cute and innocent deep inside. So I start with using some reference of uh, a rabbit cross beer puppet uh, in order to create some figures and then paint them black to see how they look as a silhouette. So you see, I start with a, a one, <laughs> a pretty weird one, and has no arms. Uh, just to experiment myself, and then I move to another one, which is a little bit uh, chumpier one. Um, you will see slowly, slowly, I build the silhouette. Uh, I use very fat arms and legs. It was nice, but I was sure I could do something that look better. So here we have something that looks thinner. So when I design all the silhouettes, I always keep in mind what the protagonist character will be, what will be the role in the game, what he will do and what will be his actions. So in this particular game, uh, we will have a kind of protagonist that is lost in some kind of weird castle and doesn't have a clue of what is going on. So it's definitely going not going to be an intimidate. Uh, I want him to be uh, more friendly, more cute. Of course, it will be kind of spooky because uh, because of the setup that we have. We have a world where there are time worn puppets like really dark theme so sure I, I wouldn't do a very uh, a very commonly cute uh, silhouette but I definitely want him to be kind of friendly to the player so he can relate to it so I started making some much rounder shapes uh, a little bit a little of character to the ear so they're not completely symmetrical and Make him a little bit more uh, less less scary. So I think I ended up with this kind of figure. So as long as I had some space left in the current image, <laughs> I tried to experiment with some other figures just uh, for fun. I tried a very fat one and another very thinner one. Now the last one looked kind of cool, but it definitely wasn't the silhouette I wanted for the player character. It might be something that we use later as an NPC. Now, having concluded on a silhouette, I open a new file and copy paste that silhouette there. I make sure that the file is not very large. Uh, this one is uh, about uh, 600 to 600 because the player sprite wouldn't be that big in the in relevance to the whole image that the player will see. So, uh, I'm starting making the line art uh, over the silhouette. A very basic line art, uh, not uh, not a very fancy one, so it's just uh, a thick line art, uh, making it as clean as possible. Uh, having the line art set, um, I started correcting some, some parts of it, and as long as I complete it, I start uh, adding the details of the face first. Uh, I start with a very weird one, uh, just to experiment. I will definitely change it uh, in the process, but just to have something to work on. Then I add the patch on his belly, which is kind of what puppets have usually. Uh, I don't keep very strict with the lines, I just try to create some interesting shapes there. Uh, and try also to work on the dimension, uh, I mean the perspective, because I want to. I want him to look like a 3-4 perspective. So he's a little bit in front but also just kind of facing to the side, to the right. Uh, okay, then add the patches to the arms and legs. Just lines and just lines and something to 
something to wrap around in the end so I can have I can have a different color there in these small sections. So it just doesn't look like a complete flat same color, the whole character. Then I wanted to add some uh, uh, personality to it. So I tried to add some, uh, a hat. Uh, first I thought it would go behind the ear, but then it looked better if it would be in front of the ear. So I tried a, a little small hat it, it didn't work for me so i i went with a bigger one then i added some straps just to have some color variation and then i i tried to give a better definition to the ears so i can also add some color inside and of course the face had to change uh it definitely looked weird it wasn't the look that i wanted to have for the character uh because it's a, a protagonist the face is very important so i had to work on it definitely had to look cuter definitely had to look to look a little more creepier a little bit but a little bit more mysterious so I went with a smaller mouse, I shrinked the face more to the bottom and I kind of went with this one. Now I went for the, the eye, I wanted him to have a, a correct, um, I wanted him to have a normal eye like a, bet, uh, like a button that usually puppets have and the other one being like uh, removed. So the eyes like a button and then I tried to add some more detail to the face just to give him a little bit more personality. Uh, this line that went from the top of the face to the bottom didn't actually fit nice. So I just kept the on the top part as you can see I removed the rest of it. And then for the mouth I also wanted to do something so I add some stitched line there and um, looking from uh, from close looking from far so to see if it fits right to my eye because you won't see initially you won't see him that close as a player you will definitely zoom him look him as a zoom out now you can see the reference I'm using for this one and now I'm trying to put some, some color. Of course I keep the color to a separate layer and the line art above the color. Now the first one looked a little bit too bright so I changed it to a little bit darker one. And of course this will be the main color of our character. Now you see where these uh, uh, lines come in use here because when I fill up the color I have some space left for the secondary color in order to give more variation to the character and not to be just a complete a, a whole uh, a com uh, sorry not to be just uh, one color sprite and then I added uh, a little bit section in the face where he would have the red color and now for the eye which is actually a button I initially make it look like a button as you'll see here, always le referencing my image and also for the nose, the same color and then working a little bit on the hat. The hat I, I want it to be uh, to look like it's uh, integrated to the body of the puppet. So I used uh, relatively the same color as the main color of the body but a little bit darker one and then added some color variation to the stripes and then for the eye it kind of looked like it's a dead puppet initially so I added a little bit more shiny color to the pupil of the eye so it looks like it is alive now lastly what I want to do is <clears throat> you see this the, the, the sprite image right now it's looking a little bit flat 
because it's just a solid color it doesn't have any shading to it or something so i added a little bit of gradient just like an overlay to my image so it will have a little bit of light coming in the top of his body uh, and then i tried to add cooler cooler colors for the for the lights and warmer color for the shadows just because my light source will be a cool one and then of course play a little bit with the with the filters and with the opacity and add a blur mask also to it just look a little bit smoother now it's time to work a little bit on our environment so i bring my rough sketch to photoshop and start uh separating everything to a different layer so I start uh, by making the floor, I select the area that I want the floor to be and I fill it with a color, then I add a mask in order to keep my layer clean and not uh, draw outside of it. A different layer for the foreground, also add a mask to it, I don't want to, to paint outside of the layer so in order to be clean I use my mask. Now for the background which will be the background wall. I don't really need to mask it because it will be the layer behind everything. So it will not affect even if I paint outside of it. Um, I'm, I'm doing some line art of the shapes just to be sure, just to be clean where everything is placed. I, ultimately, I won't be using alien line art. Everything will be replaced by color. So here we is my frame. And then I'm painting the staircase. I'm actually doing the line art of the staircase in a different layer again. It is a different object and such. It should be treated differently. Now, first I thought, okay, let's make um, the individual blocks uh, with a random distance between each other. But then I said, I thought it would be better to keep the distance fixed so it would not uh, affect the animation because the climb animation might be uh, I want the climb animation to to match the individual blocks of the staircase and then I add some colors some basic colors I'm using generally uh, references from the game Sexy Brutal which is a stylized cartoony game that takes place in a mansion so I thought it would definitely help me figure out some colors and some shapes to create uh, the, mooded the, the mooded atmosphere that I want for this room okay so now you can see here my references that I use from the game and now I start to work on individual shapes of my image. I will start with the columns and I will try to add some texture and give some dimensionality to it. So I start by selecting the, the column just to be uh, sure I'm painting inside the selection and then add some, uh, some color where the highlights would be. Then put some individual blocks of stone that I would like to create and then working a little bit on the edge of the shapes just not to be too, too flat not to be too flat but a little bit more uh, natural shape okay so now what I want to do is start uh, making some details First I select the whole column uh, in order to put it in a separate layer because I don't want to intervene with my background layer because it will be in front of the background wall and I definitely want to keep it clean. So I separate the layer, put it in a different one, of course add a mask to it, uh, adjust a little bit the color so it will, be, it will look a little bit more vibrant more saturated 
and of course I keep uh, color colors for my lights and warmer colors for my shadows just because my light source I want it to be a cool one. A cool light comes from the window. Now I start working on detail. I try to um, to paint different uh, squarish shapes with different kinds of colors that just to create the illusion of blocks of stone. And of course, have a little bar variation to my colors. I'll add a little bit, add a little bit of desaturated ones, and just uh, painting and blending my colors here. I do experiment a little bit. I'm not very familiar in painting these kind of surfaces, and also want to have a little bit of stylized look. So I try different stuff, different shapes, and different blending modes. Uh, this comes with experience and practicing in order to achieve the result that you want. I also use references from the game Rayman Legends, which have that kind of stylized look to its textures and shapes. And with that in mind, I paint with the same rhythm the individual blocks of the column. Now you can see that I also try to add a little bit of variation to my blocks, uh, not uh, not, not paint them the same way, but add some maybe some cracks to it, some other kind of shapes and surfaces, just to keep the individual block unique and not seem like a tiled column of the same block. So now I decided to to paint a little bit more big scale than small scale. So so I can see the column as a whole and not as, as an individual block. And then of course adjust the colors again a little bit. I want them to look uh, vibrant. So keep the situation high. Blend a little bit more. I'm, all, I'm always painting and blending, so it will not look very, uh, very dirty. Then I try to blend also the, the individual blocks with each other, so they seem like it's a complete, a complete body of a column, and not just a stone placed on top of each other. And of course, keep blending and keep painting until I have the result that I want. Okay, so now I'm going to close this by putting on the top uh, a different kind of material. So it will be something like a solid, saturated kind of stone that uh, decorates the top of my column and also creates a little bit of color variation and contrast by adding some cool colors there, some bluish colors. And of course, what I also want to do is uh, select one, uh, a part of my column where it will be in the shadow, fill the selection and fill it with black. Then adjust the opacity to the degree that I want in order to look a little bit more three dimensional. And with that being done, uh, I think I'm done with the color, with the column. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and put it on the other side. 
Now, uh, I want to adjust the foreground so it matches a little bit better with the dimension of the room. And it looks like it's coming towards the camera. Just uh, adjusting the mask and see where it, lo it looks better in comparison with the background columns. And I'm going to select some part of it and make them so that it's not just a straight line but also looks like a blocks of stones just like the background columns and uh, also for the right one it doesn't have to be exactly the same because the foreground doesn't show so much detail and we can be more flexible with the shapes so that's how it looks like and now i'm going to be working on the wall first start blocking some individual bricks that I want the wall to have and, we're, and of course using a dark color for the lines and then start adding some color variation of course mainly color picking from the column that I have on my left because I want to have a consistency there and working with individual shapes Try to determine where the lights will be, where the shadows will be. I definitely want to have some kind of hard edges, but also not that uh, strict ones. I want the blocks to feel kind of squarey, squarish, but also a little bit of more stylized and more free shapes. So I'm trying also to make the whole column kind of muddy, kind of uh, worn out because as I mentioned this kind of old room here, the side of a castle and I'm just working on every individual block and try to, to blend it with the rest of the blocks with the adjacent blocks that are next to its block, to its brick, or I, I should say. And also I'm trying to add some variations to the wall, not just a tiles of bricks, but also some holes or some damaged part of the wall. So as it will look like it has a little bit more of personality and a little bit more of variation its shapes. Of course at some point I will be duplicating parts of the wall. Uh, it takes a lot of time to render its individual block and the whole block, the whole wall. Uh, so I'm definitely duplicating, changing a little bit the shapes, the dimensions of the copy paste that I'm doing in order to not look like it's actually copy pasted, but I definitely just to save time have to be reusing my shapes, my rendered shapes. Uh, so from this part down, uh, it's just the same procedure. So I'm going to fast forward it with music uh, and see how the result will be for this wall. So now I'm going to cover a very uh, big part, a very, very big portion of my right wall with just duplicating the left wall. Um, of course I want to uh, avoid having uh, duplicates, uh, but this will be covered by things that will, be, will fill the room, such as frames, stuff that will be on the left side and so on. Now, uh, because my other video was going to be long, starting getting very long, I fast forward some parts of it and now I'm working on the floor 
what I did was just paint individual uh, parallel horizontal lines and then some vertical ones to create blocks of wood and then render every individual wood with some dark and light uh, curvy lines, horizontal curvy lines. So my motion of the texture here is just going horizontal. And also I'm adding some kind of nails to the edges of the block or rather to the corners, some cool, co cool colors like cyan and just adding a dark tone and then some kind of highlight tone just to see it so that it's uh, a metal, a metal kind of nail. So I'm just uh, rendering every individual block of wood with different kind of lines just to have some variation and also some color variation, a small range of color variation. And of course, give some some different kind of approach to every piece of wood by adding a, maybe an extra nail or uh, changing the shape of the the outline shape. And I also wanted to add some kind of of special part of my floor when one uh, block of wood, one piece of wood would be a little bit off and kind of covering its front part, its front piece of wood. So it's, it looks like it was mislocated. Uh, I definitely didn't get it with the first try. I did experiment on this one and you would see that I will get a much better result in the process that I have right now. Uh, I noticed that I did have to render the front piece of wood just to understand how they interact with each other. And what I try to do is highlight a little bit, bit the part that was kind of overstepping to the to the other piece of wood. So because it's more higher, it will get it will catch more light. And um, slowly, slowly, slowly rendering it and see how I can make it to look like it's in top of the other wood. I added the nails to understand the shape better and I figured out it would be good to cover the the nails of the right piece of wood. So it looks like it's in the top of it. So it's covering some portion of it and because the nails are on the on the edge, they would be covered. And with this procedure I started running every individual block I wanted to not to have the same block of wood again and again and again. So I tried to have some variation, but of course, because there are so many pieces of wood, I definitely duplicated, changed, flipped horizontal, flipped vertical, some parts of the floor, some individual blocks of wood, uh, wrapped the, um, its dimensions. So it doesn't look exactly the same, but in the end, you will definitely, definitely see uh, some piece of wood that looks almost exactly the same but the floor as a whole image definitely doesn't look like it's a repeated tile like it's a repeated uh, texture Okay, so here is how the image looks 
actually the environment looks right now. I also added the character sprite. And of course we will be keep working on it. We have lots of things to do. Hello, my name is Kilo. I'm the director of an indie game development team called Dimension Omega, where we're currently working on a project called Astra, which is a 2D platformer metroidvania game. Considering following us on Instagram, where we will be uploading content of our progress. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe, it really helps support the channel.